Hello, everyone, and welcome back to A Swift Look. I am Zoe, and today we are going to be recapping Taylor Swift's three shows in Miami. The Eras Tour is back. It feels, on some ways, it feels like it was gone, or not gone, but it was, we were on a break for a long time. And in another way, I feel like we were just in London for those final European shows. I don't know, but we're back. The final leg of the North, well, not North America, the U.S. dates, then she goes to Canada, then the tour is over. We are in the home stretch of the Ares tour, which is crazy, kicking off with Miami, three nights, as I mentioned. We're going to get into who was there, the surprise songs, maybe some Easter eggs she maybe dropped for us along the way, all the things. Want to start out with maybe the, I don't know if it's most important, but the thing that I loved the most was night one, Miami, who was there, but Donna Kelsey, Jason Kelsey, Kylie Kelsey, and then Jason and Kylie's, or two of Jason and Kylie's daughters, Wyatt and Elliot Kelsey. The Kelsey clan, (laughs) without Travis, obviously, because he had a football game this weekend, um, went to Taylor Swift's tour. Donna had talked about previously that she hasn't made it out to see Taylor's tour yet, um, mostly because by the time Taylor and Travis started dating, Taylor was playing internationally and uh, she wasn't able to make it to any of those shows. So this was the first time she was back on U.S. um, soil being able to watch Taylor perform for the first time. And we got to see Jason and Kylie. We saw Jason jamming out to I Can Do It With A Broken Heart, which is, he claims, his favorite Taylor Swift song. But seeing little Wyatt and Elliot, so cute. So how crazy would it be to be those girls? I'm sure they're still too young to fully understand it all, but like to be those two girls and to, I don't know if they, what they call her, if they call her like Auntie Taylor, but like that person on the stage is basically someone who you kind of consider to be like your family has to be so crazy. And I can't even imagine being like friends of theirs in school. (laughs) And probably on Monday morning when all the kids come back to school and they're like, what'd you do this weekend? Wyatt, Kelsey is going to be like, oh, I went to go see my uncle's girlfriend Taylor Swift I mean she's like four or five years old so she's probably not saying that but like that's crazy that's so crazy so it was very fun it's just also very sweet to see like the in-laws supporting Taylor um without Travis there like that's 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 pretty cool so that was really fun to see they were sitting in like a suite not down in the VIP tent area which is probably more comfortable probably you know they can sit down maybe a nicer experience but really really cool to see love that um some other little things before we get into the surprise songs so i think the big piece of news is that taylor swift was wearing a brand new reputation bodysuit now maybe to some people that's not that big of a deal but throughout the entire tour taylor has changed outfits for various eras she's worn different 1989 outfits she's worn she's brought in different you know speak now dresses she's brought in i mean she's definitely changed things up over the course of the, of, of the tour but the one thing that has stayed the same and consistent throughout has been the reputation bodysuit it's always been the same one until night one miami different bodysuit now this could mean nothing but it also could mean everything does this mean that reputation taylor's version is coming I kind of think yes. I think I've said this before. My prediction is that she's going to announce it either at the end of the U.S. dates or just the end of the tour in general as kind of like a final thank you to the fans and that the album will come out probably like, I don't know, January, February, March of next year. That's what I'm predicting. And I feel like she's kind of dropping some hints. I don't know. I definitely, I, I think it's on the horizon. So that was a big deal for people, something people noticed and something to think about. Okay, let's get into the surprise songs because they were they were solid. They were very solid. She was doing a lot of mashups as she has been recently. So let's break it down. Night one, she starts off with a mashup of Tim McGraw and Timeless. Love it. Love that she's saying Tim McGraw. I've said this before on different episodes. I wish she did. I wish she had a permanent spot of the tour where she did debut or she performs songs from debut and I'm I'm a little sad that she doesn't even just have one song that she does from her debut album in the permanent set list Tim McGraw our song something like that I feel like 
it doesn't feel like the complete eras tour if she's not performing at least one song from every era every tour or every night that's a conversation for a different day but that's the fact that she performed Tim McGraw I love that and then she did a mashup of this is me trying and daylight which is interesting because they're kind of they're very different songs different themes so I really I've I've always liked when Taylor she does she does mashups that like the songs are very similar in tone in theme um, in style no pun intended but I like it even more when she combines songs that I would never ever put together Uh, and this is an example of that this is me trying daylight would have never thought to perform those two together but love it Daylight, one of my favorite Taylor Swift songs. So, super good. Okay, night two, she did Should Have Said No and I Did Something Bad. Excellent. Excellent. I think she did this mashup or some version of this when she did the Reputation Tour years ago. Um, and it's just, th- and, and this is an example of two songs that like, ma- even though one's from her debut album and one's from Reputation, very different styles of music, they have the same energy and so they go well together as a mashup, but super good. And then she did um, a mashup of LOML, so Love of My Life, Loss of My Life with White Horse. Again, Chef's Kiss, love White Horse. What a throwback. So good. And then night three, she did a mashup of Out of the Woods, All You Had to Do Was Stay, so a 1989 mashup, and then Mirrorball and Guilty as Sin. Excellent. Like, I mean, <laughs> this should be obvious because... Pretty much every single mashup she does is great, but love it. If I had to pick a night to go to, this is so hard. I probably would pick night three um, just because I love all four of those songs a lot. Like I, 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 I feel very strongly about all four of them, but honestly, every single night was strong. So if you went to Miami, doesn't matter if you went to night one, two, or three, you've got good surprise songs. You should be proud of yourself for that. Um, so anyway, Miami is done. Um, now we head to we. <laughs> The tour heads to New Orleans next weekend, which is going to be really exciting and fun um, for those fans. So we'll definitely recap all of that next weekend. And then we've got the Indianapolis shows and I will be going to Indianapolis. I will be there. So I will have a firsthand account of what um, what goes down that weekend in Indianapolis. I cannot wait. I'm so excited to be there. So excited to celebrate. Um, And yeah, just enjoy these last few weeks of the Eras tour in the US. It's going to be so much fun. As always, if I missed something, leave it in the comments. Let me know. We can discuss a, a different episode. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, make sure that you're doing that. Follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.